Hey, Dan with Guardian Mold Prevent here, and I wanted to take a look with you today at a basement located in Carroll Stream, Illinois. And as you can see, this uh, basement here has taken on some water, and over a short period of time, the uh, water wicked up the drywalled walls, and the basement has developed quite a bit of mold growth throughout, uh, mainly low on the walls, and so... Uh, Therefore, we're, we're going to look at how we put together a scope of work and how do we tackle a mold problem in a basement where the mold has only developed one to two foot up off the ground. Uh, the main purpose of these videos, again, is to, to look at uh, what happens when a basement gets wet and how quickly mold can develop, uh, what types of materials get affected, and then also to show you that we realize your mold problems may not be as bad as these ones in these vacant properties, but again, if we can manage these, we most likely can manage any mold problem you have in your home. Now, when we walk into a project, we try to break things down into what types of materials are present. First, we locate the drywall, trim, insulation, fiberboard, carpeting, carpet padding, tack stripping, all items that we classify as porous. We then look for uh, the semi-porous materials, so your wood framing members basically fall in this category, and then non-porous materials, which in a basement would essentially be concrete foundation walls and floors. Once we classify what types of materials are present, we then break down a scope of work and, and tackle the project. The first thing we normally do is set up containment, so we seal off the work area from the rest of the living space so as to not contaminate the air. Uh, we then put in air scrubbers, or negative air machines as they're called, uh, to create negative air pressure to run all the air through HEPA filtration and to remove all the mold spores uh, from the air while we're working. And then we treat all of the semi-porous and non-porous surfaces with the biocide and then coat them with an acrylic-based mold-resistant coating. Uh, we'll take a look at some footage after the basement is completed, and as you can see, uh, we pulled up the flooring, we've got all the uh, drywall trim, insulation cut out, uh, and in this basement, while there were several areas where the mold was very low on the wall, there were several sections where the mold came up uh, much higher, and you kind of seen that towards the end of the original clip, and so we, again, we, we found those surfaces that were affected, and we classified them by material, and then we tackled this project uh, accordingly. So we removed all the porous materials. Your drywall, trim, insulation have all been removed. Uh, everything has been treated with a biocide and then scrubbed down physically. You can see in this basement there's actually steel framing present, but because of the uh, severity of the mold growth on the drywall, we decided to go ahead and scrub that steel down and uh, get it all treated and coated properly. Um, and then we left our air machines running for several days to make sure that all the air was run through HEPA filtration. The last step is to get the ductwork and the furnaces cleaned out in these homes. And uh, we then uh, pull everything out and uh, have them tested by a third-party uh, independent mold testing firm. Uh, I wanted to look real quickly at a, a piece of equipment that we use on every project. It will set a mold remediation contractor apart from your Joe Handyman who says he can take care of any mold problem you've got. This is an air scrubber. It runs all the air through HEPA filtration. Remember that just simply ripping mold out of your basement because you know it's there and everybody's getting sick is not going to necessarily eliminate the mold problem that you have because once you break up porous material, all those mold spores go airborne and uh, quite frankly you can create quite an air quality problem by doing that.